Hi, everyone. Um, I welcome you to the series that we'll be launching as part of NLDI. This is going to be everything you need to know about this exam and short bits of preparation note for everyone to just get a hang of what really is this exam about. So the first lecture is part of the series, which is this one. Ismay, I will talk very briefly about how do you need to start your preparation? Because NLSAT ki jo preparation hai, wo se shuru karni what should be the starting point of your preparation? How much time it takes to prepare for this exam? So there is a lot of uncertainty about it. So this very first, very brief lecture is going to be about how do you start your preparation and what all things you keep in mind as you're starting to prepare for this exam. And then in the future course of sessions, we will just very briefly look at what is part A all about, what is part B about, and how do you write answers? Now, how do you start your preparation? That's the, one of the central questions that every aspirant has in their mind as to how much time it takes to prepare for this exam and what you need to keep in mind as you're preparing. One thing, and there are not too many things you need to keep in mind for this exam. It's a relatively simple exam, but having a uh, right note of guidance is important. So, first of all, what you have to remember for this exam is you need to be in a constant touch of reading. This exam is intense in the sense that it requires you to read a lot. There will be about eight to nine passages in part A, and there will be approximately half a page long part B questions. So, all in all, it will require you to read a lot. And if you're somebody who's not in a habit of reading, especially reading texts which are coming from, say, newspaper excerpts or some magazine or from a book or from maybe some academic journal. So if you're not somebody who's used to reading so much, the first step of your preparation, it's a very simple step. You don't have to do too much. All you have to do is to start with reading almost on a daily basis and be used to reading for a long period of time. Because not only will you be reading in this exam, you'll also be simultaneously attempting questions. So to manage all of that, you need to have constant reading habit. How do you do that? For this exam, at least, I believe that take a newspaper. And even if you're not making notes out of that newspaper, or even if you're not reading that newspaper like a UPSC aspirant does, you only need to be able to read that newspaper for long enough that you are in a habit of reading long texts especially texts which are conveying some information. You keep all of your party passages. They are mostly, at least 50% of your party passages are generally taken from a newspaper. And even when they're not taken from a newspaper, the information is very similar to what's provided to you in a newspaper. That's why a very simple trick for you, and you don't need to read newspaper as if you are making notes for some uh, UPSC-like exam, but making simple mental notes of as you're reading a newspaper, but just understanding what's the information given to you. And if you're able to process that information, bas itna hi karna hai. there is nothing you need to know beyond that. So do get in a habit of reading a lot. This is especially for those who are not that much used to reading. But if you already have read a lot and you're somebody who is comfortable going through bulky, voluminous text, then it's not going to be an issue for you. But if you don't have a text padne ki aadat nahi hai, so this is a good time to start. This is the first step. If of your preparation and it's very good to know that where do you stand with respect to that second you also need to know that what not to study for this exam because there is a lot of misconception about it because if you look at CLAT it does involve some degree of legal knowledge but this exam requires you to not know anything about law at all to put it simply you're not expected to brush up your knowledge on contracts, tort law, or any such thing. This exam very categorically says that you're not expected to have any knowledge of law. So for part A or part B, koi bhi part, you don't have to read any piece of law or you don't have to be in touch with any legal concepts that you may think would be important. So that's why do keep in mind that as you're starting to prepare, do not fall into this generally a misconception that you also need to know a little bit about law. You need not, or you don't even need to look towards any such concepts. So do make that boundary and don't go into those areas of preparation which are not necessary for you. Second is how difficult is this exam? Because as you're starting to prepare, you'd also want to generally know that exam mushkil kitna hai. 
it's generally a simple exam but as i stated at the very beginning it's a long exam it takes a lot of time because you're reading so much and in part we are also writing so much so you'll definitely need to know your time management but generally it's not a difficult exam the difficulty level of your part a generally is that about 60 to 70 questions or 60 to 70 percent of your questions will be on the easier side or slightly moderate side so not too difficult and there'll be a small minority of questions maybe about 20 odd questions which will be on let's say slightly difficult to the difficult side so generally it's an easy exam not very difficult if you pick up any previous year paper and if you look at the questions they have provided especially in part a the type of questions they'll ask you is for instance they'll give you a passage and out of that passage they'll ask you questions like what is author trying to say in the following statement or what of the which of the following inferences can be drawn out of the author's argument or which of the following if true or not true would strengthen or weaken author's argument so is there any questions so then these are generally called your critical reasoning or logical reasoning questions these are the major substance of the questions you will see in your part a so what they are basically trying to test you on is effectively one how well can you just simply understand the information in part a if you information so at least 25 to 30 25% to 30% of your question will directly test your knowledge as you simply have read the passage. The other type of questions will just see how well can you infer based on the information given in the passage. So your inference skills, inference reasoning, they will test you on that. And a limited number of questions, generally not too many, but I think there will be about six to seven such questions, will test you on hypotheticals. As I said, uh, which of the statements, if true, uh, would the author agree with that statement or which of the following statements author is least likely to agree with so there you might have to apply your inference but also a little bit of hypothetical reasoning skills so this is generally the sort of questions they are asking you base or the substance of all of that relies on the information provided to you in the passage information if you understand the information which is provided to you in the passage it's not that difficult to attempt these questions the only thing which makes them difficult probably is your time management and that you're always under a time crunch so that's why it's always important to manage your time as much as you can and to effectively ensure that you're able to attempt as many questions as you can in the limited number of time so if generally going towards the difficulty level easy paper but need some time management how much time it takes to prep i think this is equally important question for many people who are starting as maybe somewhere towards the late end of this year or some of them start maybe a few months before the exam starts so kitna time approximately like that to prepare for this exam uh it also depends firstly where do you start from because for many people, they are starting to write answers for the first time. Part B is certainly a new thing for most of the people. Because even if you've given other competitive exams, maybe you are very much used to reading up a lot and you can easily process information. To be able to write answers is something which is not many people are used to doing. So it's difficult to say that there will be one size fit all approach. To prepare yourself for the exam then that is the exactly the amount of time it will take for everyone if i have to put a general average about three to four months of good preparation that is if you're able to dedicate a good amount of your daily time to this paper so it will take you three to four months but generally as early as you can start is always a good thing and the reason is part b and the answer writing in part b and knowing if you're doing it right if you're not doing it right then where do you uh where are you going wrong all those things to factor that time it's often best to start as early as possible so that you get to know how much time or what sort of mistakes you're making in your part b component but if you're anyway on a time crunch i think generally you should give yourself at the very least this is the least amount of time you should give yourself to prepare for this exam i would say about two to three months for sure three months i think would be a safe place to start your preparation from but if generally you're somebody who has time on their hands if you can start a little early then it's always a great thing to do that because it does take a little bit of time to prepare for this exam last thing i want to point out is that a regular newspaper reading is one of the best things you can do for this exam now of course some of you who will start very late into your preparation maybe you're watching this two months before the exam so you'll 
naturally think that I don't have enough time to read the newspaper. But first, I'll cover for those who have time to read the newspaper. The reason is because, one, this exam has an essay component, which is a part of your part B, and it's uh, consisting of about 15 marks. So that component certainly requires you to have some understanding of how to write an essay. So if you're somebody who's reading newspaper, or at least the editorial section of your newspaper, you will know exactly how to write an essay. Because all your newspaper editorials are effectively essays. They're all written in an essay-like format. They're written with some sort of information provided to you. There is some sort of argument being made in that editorial piece. So Celia, for essay writing especially, reading an editorial is a very effective tool. Other than that, mm -hmm. if you're in just in touch with your newspaper reading, your GK preparation also becomes very easy. The question is now, how in depth you should read the newspaper? Generally, just to even, even if you're reading through the headlines, if you're just going through the top of the information, what is whatever is given to you uh, in the headings of the newspaper, even that's enough because you will know at least what's happening. The GK in this exam doesn't test you too much in depth as much as it tests you on wide range of issues it's covering. So it's likely not going to ask you something too much from the depth as much as it's going to ask you from what's, for instance, they might ask you something about an ongoing event. They might ask you about some ongoing big government policy, something like that. But they're most likely not going to test you on something very in-depth within that. That's why just a bare perusal of newspaper is also enough if you are somebody who has time on their hands. If you don't have time on your hands, you should still nonetheless do this. The reason is one, it prepares you to read a lot of bulky text. Second, it also helps you, as I said, with editorials, because a lot of your newspaper editorials help you with your essay writing a lot in your part B and your essay does carry 15 marks. So the more you read, even if not for the information sake that you get from an editorial, just simply for the sake of understanding how do you write a properly structured essay, it helps you a lot to read an editorial because an editorial is perfectly structured. It gives you an idea of how you should present your information, how you should present your arguments, and how you should deal with counter arguments. So that entire structure of an editorial perfectly gives you a template for how you should approach your own essay writing as well. So irrespective of where you are in your stage of preparation, just referring to those opinion pieces or editorial pieces in a newspaper will go a long way in giving you a good touch of essay writing and also to some extent it also helps you with generally your part a reading as well because you're reading a lot and that helps you with understanding difficult information at times or complex information so this is all you need to know at the very basics about this exam what this exam is about if you're starting very fresh into this paper what you need to know about this exam and what are some very basic crucial components all the things i pointed out in this very brief session are things which are non-negotiables. So these things you certainly need to do. Anything above and beyond is certainly up to you. But these are generally the things you certainly need to be equipped with if you're starting to prepare for this exam. Thank you.